Well, they asked for it, so they got it. A shady response for shady behavior. Let's go. Yo, what's up? I'm Jaden Nerd, and I wanted to talk to y'all about something that's really been bothering me. And rather than call out an individual or a group or whatever, I figured I would just wrap up everybody that's ever done this, is currently doing this, or may potentially do this in the future. And I'm talking about this concept of people jocking somebody's style or taking credit for something that somebody else did or not being original enough to come up with own concepts, but would rather hang around and get inspired by somebody else's hard work or their innate ability to create. So something says that it can be a teachable moment and to demonstrate the difference between reading and shade as I shade this very shady behavior that I and many of us experience. It just really bothers me when people are dishonest and have an air about how they choose to just lay low at the surface and never really assert what their true intentions could be. One of my favorite clips and one of my favorite documentaries of all time is Paris is Burning. The scene with Dorian Corey is perhaps one of my favorite scenes because she describes the difference between reading and shade. You're wondering why am I bringing this up? How does this apply to people stealing ideas and concepts and not being original and, and my frustration and my shady response to their shady behavior? It's the most perfect reference because this entire video up to this point, I have been exhibiting examples of reading and shade. The literal sense of my reading has been my demonstration of my vocabulary versus the limited ability of people who can't come up with their own. The shade aspect is me articulating upon that, knowing that they are aware, because I'm aware, and that shade. I don't think that I do it justice in terms of definition or context. So allow me to play this clip from Paris is Burning to provide further context as to what is reading, what is shade, and how we can apply it in shady situations as this. Check this out. I'll come back with the rest of this read and shade, courtesy of J.D. Nerd. Shade comes from reading. Reading came first. Reading is the real art form of insult. You get in a smart crack and everyone laughs and kikis because you found a flaw and exaggerated it, then you've got a good read going. When you are all of the same thing, then you have to go to the fine point. In other words, if I'm a black queen and you're a black queen, we can't call each other black queens because we're both black queens. That's not a read. That's just a fact. So then we talk about your ridiculous shape, your fa saggy face, your tacky clothes. Then reading became a developed form where it became shade. Shade is, I don't tell you you're ugly, but I don't have to tell you because you know you're ugly. And that's shade. Watching that clip and thinking about the context that Dorian Corey provides, there are a couple of things that really stand out. And I think they apply to my situation and other people who may be in this conundrum, if it will. I don't have to say anything specific because the truth in this read, in terms of my just ability to be elevated above what you're capable of, speaks to itself. And the fact that I'm not even performing at a hyperbolic level is more example of shade because I don't even have to exert energy to say what we already know. You'll never be a wordsmith. You'll never be anyone that is capable of, of tapping into any inherent ability or anything innate that can benefit or amplify anything or anyone around them. People that tend to go after and steal ideas and concepts and just take credit for hard work they're very shallow individuals. I had a teacher in high school, junior high school rather, one of her favorite phrases was to say, empty barrels make the most noise. And this tends to apply truthfully today. Whether it's social media, YouTube, work, home, relationships, church, or any religious aspect, you will find that the most empty individuals are the loudest. They tend to operate and in most overt fashion. As I think about the documentary we just watched and as I think about what reading is, is calling out flaws and, and highlighting things for a good chuckle and a kiki. So my aim for this video is really not to read. 
I have plenty of videos in my catalog where I've demonstrated an ability to not only throw shade, but read. Been doing it almost all of my life. You're not even warranting me calling you an all winter long staying bird as that was my first read to my aunt. There will always be people who are dependent upon the ability and the talent and the foresight of others. We are lifeboats in a sea of human drudgery. But for all intents and purposes, cling on to the life raft if you must. If that is your way to survive and if that is your way to be relevant, if that is how you metaphorically survive, then by all means cling with every ounce of strength you have, which if I were to surmise, would be minimal. Hence the exaggerated clenching that you exert with your desperation. I wanna conclude this video with something that I find quite humorous, but I think it would echo my sentiment moving forward as I distance myself from the past and acknowledge the foolery of present events, all the while being aware that there are future moments and future people that shall commit this act again. Um, allow me to just conclude by saying that I don't want smoke because if you bring me smoke, I'll hand you your ass back to you, blackened. Allow me to just play this clip, and I think it echoes my sentiment beautifully. Because at the end of the day, I don't want nobody fucking with me in these streets. I don't want nobody fucking with me in these streets. Same children. I don't want nobody fucking with me in these streets. Uh -uh. I don't want nobody fucking with me in these streets cause Ain't nobody got time for that <laughs> Ain't nobody got time for that <laughs> Ain't nobody